Pisces, welcome to your prosperity reading for the period from April 1st to July 1st, 2017. And the reason I'm doing this is because I did it a few months ago and now it's coming up on the time when I should be doing it again. And what I'm going to be doing is my typical spread, but it's going to be for a focus specifically of career. And I hope that these readings are not redundant because I've just done general readings, but I kind of like focused readings. I did do, you know, I do love readings every month and I do general readings, which can include anything, but I love the idea of focused readings. Now, I mean, you know, for career and money and things like that. The other thing I wanted to say is that I would love to be able to talk about astrological transits, but I've decided to just skip that this time around because I really feel that knowing the exact birth date is the best way to go about that. And as I was just telling Capricorn, I do have uh, personal readings. If you're interested in something along those lines, you know, for career, and um, I have life path readings and I have career and love together because the the birth chart can really tell you. I mean, there's different houses and you, you, you're dealing with the exact placement of those planets in those houses. The The sixth house is the house of work and the 10th house is the house of career and the second house is the house of income that you earn. So to me, it's just much more precise. And I just don't want to even, I, I respect astrology too much to drag it into this reading. I feel like with the Tarot, it's more open-ended, so I, I don't, I'm not concerned. You know, this is a general reading, so it has to encompass everybody born under a certain sign. So in any case, I'm going to uh, lay out the cards and it's going to be my typical spread, but I'm also going to be reading from this book, I had this bright idea by Catherine Ponder. You may have seen this before. It's called The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity. And it is a very interesting book. Now, I, it's funny because I'm, I'm acting like I actually read this book. I've read some of it, but not all of it from cover to cover. But having just read that excerpt for Capricorn, now I'm like really kind of an eager beaver to read the, the whole book from cover to cover. Actually, what I'm going to do is just like open up quote unquote randomly, which I don't believe in randomness, and then read you the passage that pertains to whatever it says. Okay, so here I go. This is for you for a three month period. Wow, you got a card that that Capricorn got. Okay, now I'm gonna open this book. Okay, that's an introduction, so I'm gonna have to open another part. Okay, this is perfect for Pisces. And forgive the trains. Uh, for some reason, I guess after midnight, they just start going crazy. And I did not expect and it would be like this at this time of night. Avoid hard times talk. Do not think, talk, or act any way but prosperously. Do not allow others to talk to you in any way but prosperously. Do not read anything or take seriously anything that is printed or said that seems contrary to prosperous thinking. If you mix up your trend of thought, you, you set up cross currents that neutralize your efforts of prosperity. In order to be permanently prosperous, dare to be different. You should not become upset when people t 
talk hard times. Neither should you join their sad chorus unless you want to experience hard times. And then there's a quote. Oh, hard, unless you want to experience hard times yourself. Instead, declare in the face of apparent hard times. Divine restoration is taking place. The good which the locusts of lack have eaten is being divinely restored. The divine law of balance and equilibrium is doing its perfect work. The law of divine adjustment and balance is a universal law, and you can help that balancing factor work for good through your prosperous state of mind. This can be a time of rich blessings and great prosperity for you, because as the salesman declared, there is gold dust in the air. So, um, you know, that is perfect for Pisces because you are a sign that I now I'm afraid to say these things because I have gotten comments, you know, from people who who are Pisces apparently who, you know, might not like to hear anything that is of the shadow aspect of, of Pisces. And you have to understand that, you know, I'm a Sagittarius, so there are shadow aspects of Sagittarius. And, you know, if I'm going to do Sagittarius's forecast, I'm not going to forget those either. But is there pessimism with um, Pisces? There can be because of a feeling of, you know, what would I say, learned helplessness. When I see someone's chart and they have sun, moon, or rising sign in Pisces, I'm almost guaranteed that they may have had a difficult childhood, for instance. You know, Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac, and it tends to be the sign of an old soul. And so there's a lot of karma that's associated with people that have had lifetime after lifetime. If you're an old soul, you've amassed a lot of experiences. And so it's not a question of necessarily that they are negative in the classic sense. It's just this you know, I think it's almost like victimhood, you know, and that can come because of really experiencing situations, especially as a child, where they were in a position of powerlessness. And so this is one of the reasons why it's even more important for you to make sure that you surround yourself with positive people and to choose very carefully the types of of entertainment you you are into and whether you know what you feed yourself with because you're very impressionable you're a mutable water sign after all and you know mutability means changeability and water is very easily programmed it's it it can um, take on what it is um, what is put onto it Okay, I'm going to start with the reading. So the overall theme for this three-month period is the Eight of Wands. This is actually a very good card because it's a card of movement, of things just happening, crackling, you know, back and forth. Maybe messages, offers, you know, good news. You might get a job offer, but it might be something that just kind of comes out of nowhere. And... The question is, are you going to be prepared for it? Are you going to be in a stage where you feel like, yes, I'm going to just grab it? Or are you going to feel like, oh, I have these loose ends here? So if you're watching this in March, just reflect on your life right now and say, you know, if I had a situation where I was offered a job and it was somewhere else, would I be able to kind of pack everything up and go within a short period of time? Or do I have so much stuff that is kind of like um, a burden to me that I need to kind of pare down my life so that I can act at a moment's notice? Because that can sometimes be the difference between 
um, taking, you know, grabbing an offer when it's given to you and having to let it pass you by. Now, in the past position, we, we see the Page of Pentacles, another message. Page equals message and Pentacles equals something tangible, like a, jo uh, like a career, money. Um, this, yeah, sometimes Page of Pentacles can indicate students. Um, so, you know, it could be like if you are of the age range that you are in college, for instance, and now, you know, the period of time that I'm talking about does go into the summer. You may have graduated and you're getting um, some kind of a job offer. Uh, so that would be really, and you were a student, and now you're getting these offers. So that would be really wonderful. For other people, it could just be indicating that you received contact from, you were contacted by an employer. And so, and then all of a sudden it started this barrage or this frenzy of back and forth information. What is, you know, in the, in the, um, what is accompanying this at this time is the Queen of Cups. So you may be kind of checking in with yourself on a, on a you know, what would you call a psychic level? to determine whether or not you should go for this situation and you I do consider you the most psychic sign um, I, I don't know if this card is connected to cancer that's what I was thinking so it might be talking about the time when you will make your decision which could be uh, from there's going to be actually a New Moon in Cancer on June 23rd, so that might be around the time when it, you make your decision, but it could be that you are looking at it from an intuitive point of view and kind of seeing if it feels right to you, whatever is going on, because especially if it's something that you weren't expecting you may be kind of taken aback. Maybe you've been looking for a job for a long time and then suddenly it appears and you're like, <laughs> it's almost like you don't know what to do because it's like you, you're so used to not having um, that situation. And then, or even like being in a job that you didn't like and getting this lifeline or this other opportunity and still being like, well, I'm not sure if I should. The higher message is the Ace of Wands. And so this is like kind of like the go for it, the green light kind of a card. Now, obviously, because this is a general reading, it has to be weighed against the circumstances of your particular situation. You know, I would never say everybody who sees this video, <clears throat> go for your go for a new job and quit your old job. But this is definitely about beginnings, but beginnings that feel very exciting, not, not like, well, this is going to be very practical. This is something that lights your fire and gets you going. And, you know, you got that eight of wands, so there's an excitement in the air where you feel like things are turning for the better in your life. And that is the, the theme that is kind of getting you all um, excited. And you know, I was just thinking about this. You do have that, that solar eclipse that just happened in February, at the end of February. And I'm recording this in mid-March, so it's not even that long after that eclipse. They say that these solar eclipses can last up to six months, so that the aftermath may be what is in play here and kind of setting these new experience for, for you, uh, Pisces. What crosses you is the Queen of Pentacles. This could be a boss that is, um, you know, maybe she is thwarting you or trying to, you know, prevent you from leaving her business. But it could be a facet of you. Maybe you are 
being a little bit too concerned about your security and even if you're in a job that you dislike you may be like well I don't know if it's that bad and I think you know maybe I should just stick with this this is a, like um this is something that is a known quantity and that's true you know whatever situation you're in it certainly is something that is predictable and it's up to you to decide whether or not that's acceptable in some cases it might be the exact right thing to do for an example an example of that is if there are, is risk in a new venture and you have children you may not want to put them especially if you would have to uproot them you may not want you know for a, to to um, move for a job you may not want to do that especially if you don't know if it's going to work out that's not being um, somebody who is overly overly uh, security minded that might be a very sensible thing to do but we're talking about when you, you know you do have that option of moving and you could do it but you're still kind of like dragging your feet for some reason the advice or what's coming in is the eight of cups so it looks like some people will decide to leave within that time frame and it's on the soul level the cups relate to the emotional self so it's like feeling that they just don't connect emotionally to what they're doing it's that's an important thing because I think with Pisces a lot of times you're not materialistic um, you are really sometimes irrational and that's a compliment coming from me I mean you're not like guided by the the logical mind like your opposite sign Virgo so you kind of feel your way through life through your feelings through your intuition and if something doesn't feel right to you and that's what I was talking about with the Queen of Cups you may just say this isn't working for me and it's almost like if you don't have your heart into something you may just be like going through the motions and to you because you are a water sign that's kind of the worst thing for you because you really love to feel emotionally fulfilled you know another sign maybe an earth sign person could deal with feeling emotionally unfulfilled because the money makes them feel emotionally fulfilled but not you so that may be something that you come to realize within that time frame and then the outcome is the star card and I love this as the final card because it may mean that your dreams come true maybe that one action of leaving um, puts you into the position of being able to go towards your dreams especially if um, the eight of wands is something that has happened for you where you're getting these kinds of offers uh, and the ace of wands that sense of wanting to you know kind of chomping at the bit you know and starting something new maybe even your own business but this can be something that you've always dreamed of doing and it could be grace I mean it could be that something just kind of almost falls in your lap even that you weren't expecting but I mean of course I always believe that we have to you know it's like pray and get your feet moving it's not just a question of waiting for something to drop in our lap but sometimes there is grace isn't there when you know somebody gives you money <laughs> you know that you never expected or um, just anything you 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 get a call for a job and you never applied for it somebody recommended you I mean the list goes on and on so anyway Pisces that's wonderful and I hope you enjoyed this and I wish you all the best in the upcoming months take care bye